Alleluia. Good morning, Healing School Day. Praise the Lord. The Lord always confirms His Word with signs following. What I have on my heart for us, oh, how many, I mean, this is your very first one out of the whole week. It's your first time to come to pre-service prayer. Really? Well, we're so glad to have you. Glad to have you. What made you decide to come today after the, is, are you, did you just get here for the meeting? Yeah, this morning at 6 a.m. Got here this morning at from 6 California. from California. <laughs> it took you five days to escape. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> 30, 30 summers before you. Michelle, what have you been thinking? <laughs> Watching on TV and the Lord said, get on that pony and ride. So we thank you for coming. We're glad that you are here. Praise the Lord. I'm glad all of you are here. And let me say, and I'll probably repeat it again tonight, but I just want to say thank you. And thank you not only from me, but also from all of us here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Eagle Mountain International Church. We're so grateful, so grateful for people who would come. I know that it takes a special effort to stay late and get up early. I really do understand that. But it is an extra effort and I appreciate it. And you know, I think I said it earlier in the week, but effort counts. While it's not everything, it does matter. Well, it does matter. And my dad says there are four things that are necessary, four ingredients, four elements that are necessary for success in anything. Time, effort, prayer, and finances. And all of you have invested all four of those things to be here. Even if you didn't do anything but drive, drive here from, you know, a, a, a few, a few blocks away. Well, Sugar Land too. But anything, even if you just did that, the money it took to put gas in your tank, the time that it took, the effort that you made, and the fact that you came specifically to be here for prayer really touches my heart. And it matters. It matters not only to you, it matters to the kingdom of God. And this morning, it matters to other people. It matters to those that are watching online or on satellite. You know, when dad gives numbers for the viewership, we really don't know who all's watching via satellite. We don't have those numbers, uh, especially right on the spot. And so we, we really have no idea how many are watching. Nancy, I wanted to say thank you. I've been watching you down there. I'm so honored to have you. I would just like to recognize Nancy Dufresne, a powerful, lovely, wonderful woman of God. I'm so honored that you would take your time and come and sit here, be with us. I could just turn the, the pulpit over to you at any time. And so if you have something, I should have offered you this earlier in the week. If you have something, please just... Just come up and take over. It'll be fine. Nancy's coming very soon to come to EMIC. Going to do a Sunday service and a Monday chapel for us. And we're looking forward to that. So this morning, we're going to take some time to intercede for those who are in need of healing. And healing, I want to read something to you and show you something out of probably the most used healing verse for those of us that go to the scripture for healing. And that's in 1 Peter 2, 23 and 24. You, of course, recognize that part of the verse that says, by his stripes you were healed. Yeah. Reading from the Amplified, when he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. He made no threats of vengeance. He trusted himself and everything to him who judges fairly. People come in a lot of times finding themselves in such a health crisis because of being distraught and just bottom line, not trusting God, trusting God with other, with other things. And when you don't trust God with other things in your life and those things are the cause of your trouble, your bad health, your, whether it's in your mind or in your body, 
then it's really hard to trust him for your health. So interceding for people along those lines and praying that they, and encouraging and praying that they are strengthened in their inner man to roll cares and to trust him. Okay, we'll pray to that end in a moment. It says he personally bore our sins in his body on the tree as on an altar that we might die to sin, live to righteousness. What is that? That's spiritual well-being. You don't get healed in your spirit. You get born again. But you can be strengthened in your spirit or you can be weak in spirit. The strong spirit of a man will sustain him in bodily pain and trouble, which the opposite of that is if you're weak in spirit, your body doesn't have anything to draw on and needs help from the outside, needs help from other supplies of the spirit. And that's what we're here to do this morning. By his wounds, you have been healed. There is healing for the body. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Isaiah says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So what that tells us is on the cross, All the the condition for all three parts of our being were handled. There was redemption. Redemption from all the impacts of sin. The new birth for the spirit, strengthening for the spirit, peace, wholeness, well-being for the mind, for the soul, for the emotions, and health and well-being for the body. He took care of it all. But sometimes situations happen and we need help. We need help. It's not impossible to receive for yourself, but we can get in such a situation that we need help. So we're going to pray for others. I want to read a few verses to you that help us focus our intercessory time. Second Corinthians 1 11, you are joining and helping us through your prayers. This was the apostle Paul. Many times he said, pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. He said, pray for us, we'd be delivered from wicked men. Pray for us that we'd be strengthened. Pray for us that we'd have boldness. Pray for us that we'd have utterance. Pray for us we'd have understanding. Pray that the door would be open for us. The apostle Paul needed prayer. Don't feel shamed or guilty that you need it. Don't put off on others what you need to be doing for yourself, but don't find guilt and condemnation because you need help. Apparently we all do. Philippians 1:19, I know this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ. King James says, and your supply of the spirit, the supply that you bring makes a difference. We've been talking all week about atmosphere and the cumulative effect of believing God. Psalm 122, six says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the wholeness. You know, that goes not just to atmosphere, but the wholeness of groups of people, the wholeness of a habitation, the wholeness of a home, the wholeness of a city, the whole and wellness of a nation. I should get an amen there. So, while all eyes are on COVID because it's the most rampant thing and it's the most talked about thing, uh, but there are others, the other things as well. AIDS didn't go away, brothers and sisters. There are a lot of other things that didn't go away. Cancer didn't go away. All other kinds of illnesses. Suicide is at an all, all time high even especially among teenagers. So there are things here that need a supply of the spirit. And we declare, may they prosper who love you and praying for the peace of this nation. On your walls, Jerusalem, I've appointed watchmen all day and all night. They'll never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. Give him no rest till he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That doesn't mean we have to poke God and and try to just worry ward him until he gets in the notion of doing something. No, talks about giving him no rest. It's 
It's spiritual law in motion. He is eager and he's calling for us. Give me reason, give me cause, give me opportunity. Why would we have to do that? Because so many times other people are undoing what he wants to do for them. Other people, they're, they're walking in defiance, walking in sin, walking out not in faith. They're caught up in the things of the world, don't know the sin, the sin of, of doubt and unbelief so that I've heard what he said, but I don't know about that. I question that, I doubt that. All those things are at work and God still wants them well. God still wants this nation well. God wants such a healing revival poured out in this nation. And so he's saying, don't leave me alone about this. Come on, I can move because you prayed. I can move because you asked me. You know, so you asked me. And the more we yield to that and give that to him, the more intercession is an act of love. And so we're giving opportunity for love to flow. And love wants to heal. Ephesians 6 to 18, be alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. So important, perseverance. Don't give up. It's, if you know the difficulty you've had at times receiving and you're you're endeavoring on purpose, think about how hard it is sometimes to get things to people who are ignorant or in opposition or undoing as as much as you're praying they're undoing. So persistence is necessary. Then we know the occasion where um, Moses, they were fighting Amalek. Amalek is a type of, of the world, an opposition. And so Moses, Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. Moses held his hands up and they prevailed. As long as he held his hands up, his hands got heavy and others came in and to support him. And so as we pray today, praying for Brother Copeland, praying for Pastor George, praying for the leaders in in 1440. Hallelujah. Why not Super Kids? We had to close Super Kids down last night. Why did we close Super Kids down? Because we had, we had, did have someone test positive for COVID, a couple of other people with some symptoms. And so by the time we asked around and there were some that didn't want to be a part of that, and we understood that, I didn't have enough people to work in Super Kids. So it wasn't like we had a knockdown, drag out sweep, but we're going to be smart about that. And legally you can't operate if you don't have enough volunteers. Amen. And so we didn't, but bless the Lord in Jesus name, we're not stopping. We're not stopping. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so we want you to know we didn't run scared of that. We're not running scared, but you have to pay attention. And if you look in the scripture there, um, when people, there were certain diseases that were highly contagious, the Lord said, separate them. Okay, separate them. So there's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be, don't be foolish and show up and cough and sneeze all over everybody else. You know? That's, that's, that's just, that is actually scriptural, but that doesn't mean you have to operate in fear. And if you get coughed and sneezed on, plead the blood, wipe your nose, take a vitamin C and move forward. I mean, I I know, I know it's a little more effort than, than that, but, but you know, a whole, a whole part of faith, a big part of faith, not all of it, but a part of it frankly, is attitude. Allow faith to produce an attitude. Attitude has a lot. I'll just stick this in here and then we wouldn't get to praying. So in the house we lived in some years ago, you can walk out our bedroom and see all the way through the living room into the kitchen. We had a little poodle, little guy about this big. And I, I was seen to be the one that does the most with the dogs, you know, the taking care of them and training and so forth. And so I, I could hear my husband, I was in the bedroom and I could hear my husband saying, Peppy, no, Peppy, stop that, stop that, put that, what are you doing, Peppy, 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 Peppy. <laughs> oh, what in the world is going on? And I stepped out and I looked. And Peppy's up there digging through the trash. The trash can's sitting out for some reason. And I could hear George yelling at the dog. They're just, I don't, you know, sometimes mama has just got away, right? 
And I just walked out, took a few steps towards the kitchen and I said, Peppy. (laughs) Peppy drops the trash. And it was like, he's thinking in his little mind, back away from the can, back away from the can. Some of it is just attitude, but attitude's no good if there isn't the spirit of faith and confidence behind it. And the devil will tempt, the devil will push. He will test you a little, a lot. He he just try in every which kind of way to try to draw you off of your faith. And sometimes you just got to show a little attitude. Having done all to stand and sometimes just standing. Do the eyebrow thing. The eyebrow thing really helps, you know. (laughs) Raise my children by that left eyebrow. It's great. The Bible says he will guide us with his eyes. Sometimes you can just look into the eyes of the master and know this is great. This is wonderful or uh uh-oh, better make a change. It's good. It helps us. Okay. I ask on your behalf. I do this, John 17, Jesus, the consummate intercessor. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but those of whom you've given me, they are yours. All things are mine that are mine are yours and yours are mine. I've glorified them. I'm no longer in the world and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you've given me, that they may be one even as we are. Are one. I, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them perished except the son of perdition. So the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. And you can hear his heart of compassion. I've given your, them your word. The world hated them, but they're not of the world as I'm not of the world. What's he doing? He is legally presenting his his case before the father, not only making requests, but he is presenting his case and, and leverage. This is what's happened. I've done my part. And now Lord, I'm asking you and believing to receive on their behalf what I know they need. James 5, 16, pray for one another that you may be healed. This is where getting ourselves off our mind and praying for others puts The spiritual things, why does the Bible say if you don't forgive, then your heavenly father won't forgive you? Well, why is that? Because God's just got a, a, going to hold it out on you. No, but, but everything in God is a cycle. And if you reject forgiveness, if you stop it, if you stop it from flowing, then it will, it will stop from flowing. And when you forgive somebody else, it's not your own forgiveness that you're working with. It's the forgiveness of God. And when you stop it flowing through you, you're going to shut it down coming to you. Amen. So let's stand. This last verse I want to read to you and how we're praying. And this in Philippians 1, 4, he said, I'm always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. Never forget to be joyful in prayer. Never forget the joy of the Lord. Sometimes prayer can be weighty. Sometimes it can weigh on you like a burden and that's fine. And it it can be a good thing. It makes us aware and that's okay. But don't, don't take that burden on as though you are the caretaker or that, or that you are the answer provider because you're not. He is. And so we allow things to be big in our hearts and that's a good thing. But always, always, you roll all your care over on him and it's our joy to make intercession. It's our joy to pray. Why is it our joy? Because we love people, but also because we know that God loves them and that the answer is available. 
We are not, we are not interceding and praying to no end. We're not interceding and praying for no cause. We're not, we're not hopeless. We're not begging. We're not beggars trudging through the heat and the cold. We're not pilgrims through this, this hard and weary land with no hope and only, only, only clinging and holding on long enough till we make it to the other side. No, bless God, we're the glorious church and we are increasing in His glory. We are growing. We are growing in our faith. We're growing in our stature. We're growing up into the fullness of the, the stature of the full height and image of the Lord Jesus Christ who is not sick and He is not weary and He is not broke and He is not poor and he's not confused and he's not uncertain and he's not suicidal. Praise the Lord. We're growing up into him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who's, who's here with me, David? Thank you. Come, come brother. Father, in the name of Jesus. If there's any of you want to come forward and pray, you can. About nine or 10 minutes here. Father, we come before the most holy throne of God. We come before the throne, the throne that itself represents who you are. It, and by your very nature, your very being, it is, it is, you are in constant motion towards us. You're in constant motion to bring to us what Jesus has provided that Lord, you gave to Jesus all that is yours and Jesus has brought that to us. You are the enforcer, you are the supply. You have named yourself, called yourself, brought yourself into service to us as our healer. You said, I will be your healer. I will bring healing to you. I will be your restoration. I will be your peace. I will be your deliverer. I will be your redeemer. I will be your hope. I will be your help. I will be your standby. I will be your comfort. I will take your care. I will carry your burdens. I will be your provider. I, I am your shepherd. I am your, your, your constant unending supply of whatever you need. I am that I am. And Lord, we're so privileged. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray over every person, Lord, who has need of any sort in this place today, but most particularly those who are in need of peace of mind and wellness of body. Lord, we pray for them and that their eyes would be enlightened to understand and to know you, to know your nature, to know your character, to know your ability, that Lord, you are not just a God who desires to be our healer. You are the God who is health. You are God who's life. Your very, your, your very being, your very being is health itself. Your very being is life itself. Your very being is love. Your ve the very essence of your presence brings and quickens healing. Signs and wonders and miracles, Lord, that point to your divine, your divine strength and power. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you to know that in spite of insufficiencies, in spite of sin, in spite, Lord, of failures, in spite of shortcomings, in spite, Lord, of past and history, in spite of abuse, in spite of physical abuse, in, in spite of drug abuse, in spite of, of, of mishandling our health, in spite, Lord, of addictions, in spite, Lord, of all those things, you are sufficient to get life and strength and health to us. Lord, I'm asking you to quicken in every person the adjustments that they need to be, to make in order to be in line, Lord, to receive. That, Lord, you are pouring out life. You're pouring out love. You're pouring yourself out. You pour yourself out in this room. And that, Lord, in, the, in a flash, in a moment, we make adjustments within ourselves that we make adjustments, Lord, having the courage to adjust, a courage, Lord, to move, Lord, for those that have been disobedient, 
They know they've disobeyed. They've disobeyed the call. They've disobeyed what you've told them to do. They've done things they shouldn't have and they haven't done things they should have. Lord, those who have been in unforgiveness, Lord, those that have been in strife, Lord, those that have been in sin, that Lord, in such a flesh, they can shake loose of that and be aware. Let, let all of that, Lord, fall to their feet in the light of your great mercies and compassion. We're asking, Lord, for your mercy, for the sake of your name, your namesake, for your namesake, Lord. Your namesake is healer. Your namesake is deliverance. Your name is salvation. Your name is strength and power. Your name is ability. Your name is compassion. Your name is loving kindness. Your name is mercy. Your name, your name. And you, you are the teacher of the church. As Brother Copeland brings the word to us today, we pray, Lord, that he has divine utterance in his stack that came, and that all of his words, Lord, are packed with divine quickening. That, Lord, every person in the sound of his voice will hear what you want them to hear. Lord, your word tells us that your word is quick and powerful that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, that it will divide between the soul and the spirit, that it will divide in joints and even down into the very the very core and spirit life of the being, that it will determine and read the thoughts and the intentions of every mind and every heart. I pray, Lord, that every word spoken will be words Lord, that will speak specifically to every person. Those words, Lord, will ride on grace that is designed for every person. That grace, grace will fit every person's need. That grace will match every need. And that everything necessary to bring 100% of healing to this, the people in this room and beyond. That 100% of the people, Lord, will be quickened to know you, quickened to hear your voice, quickened to make adjustments, Lord, so that it's easy. It's easy to receive. Lord, I pray that each and every person be strengthened in their inner man by the Holy Spirit. Strengthened in their inner man. Lord, we make a provision, a supply of the Spirit right now. Lord, as we pray in the Holy Spirit, let that supply flow in this room. Lord, that every person that needs extra, every person that needs spiritual strength and courage to receive and to partake, Lord, let that spirit flow. The supply flow. The supply flow. Lord, we pray that people would find this message today. There'll be people to tune in. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Dish Network, uh, Direct TV, uh, the KCM.org, EMIC.org, Victory Television. Lord, every outlet that we have, that Lord, that Lord, people are being drawn, drawn right now, <clears throat> drawn to hear the word, drawn to hear that they'll have ears to hear ears to hear, ears of their spirit, eyes of their spirit, that the light of the glorious gospel would strike their spirit with revelation and that life and health and strength and power will come on them and that, Father, lives will be redirected, that lives will be reordered in the name of Jesus. Lord, we take authority now over the spirit of death, the spirit of death, Lord, that rides on, on the shoulders of some. The spirit of death, deliverance, Father, from evil spirits, evil spirits that have held people's minds in bondage, evil spirits that have lied, lied, oppression, depression, suicide, confusion, mental disorders of all kinds, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, in the name of Jesus, Lord, every kind, every kind of mental disorder. Okay. 
And Lord, those that have lost and lo lost sight of the joy of their salvation, let joy rise and be their strength. Let joy rise and be their strength. Let joy rise and be their strength. The joy, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, temperance, meekness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, oh, stability, stability to come. Lord, restoration of relationships, restoration of marriages, restoration between parents and children, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins. Lord, restoration, employment restoration. Inside, Lord, those who are, are in, under great pressure, great pressure for answers, that their health will be at risk if they continue, that Lord answers to come, that they'll be out from under the burden in Jesus' name. Come out from under the burden in Jesus' name. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for a lovely presence in here today. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name, all in the name. Let your name be glorified. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, let's pray and just let's sing in the spirit. Let's sing in the spirit for a little bit. Let's sing in the spirit for a little bit. Let's sing in the spirit for a little bit. Let's sing in the spirit for a little bit. Guys, I need to hear you step up, pray in the spirit. Let's sing in the spirit for a little bit. Ari ala masam la makala masam la makala. Ya la romo ala la ki hongele le le asole ki ara le ki ondora namble ya lo ri ni di alu. Ari ala masam la makala masam la makala. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.